Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. So first up today, Tobias Lind showed us on YouTube that at Giga Berlin, there are now some Model Ys with the front casting. Now they've been doing a lot of testing the past few months, but on the Q3 call, Tesla said before the end of this year, they want to be making Model Ys with both the front and the rear casts and the structural pack. For a while, the front castings had to be shipped in from America because the machines were not up and running at Berlin. But if Tesla is looking to make production type vehicles with this technology, that would imply that the machines are finally up and running, the waste has been reduced and they're ready to roll, which is not a small deal. Real quick from yesterday's video, when it comes to the audible transition or a sound denoting new topics, Thank you to everybody that provided input. Naturally, it was pretty mixed, so I'm not exactly sure what I'll do going forward. I'm still going to try different things, so just bear with me, but we'll get it sorted and hopefully settle into a nice place. Next up, we have one that I think is pretty ironic. So the state of Michigan retirement system owns around $200 million worth of Tesla stock. But it's ironic because over the last few years, Tesla has been in a huge battle with the state of Michigan trying to get the direct sales ban removed. Basically, Tesla has had to work through loopholes to get customers in Michigan in Tesla vehicles. So basically, the state is happy to profit off of Tesla stock, but when it comes to allowing Tesla to sell direct to the consumer, which is better for the consumer, not so much. They're not as interested in that. Here we have a tweet from Troy. Just want to clarify something. He said the Shanghai Consumer Protection Department inadvertently helped Tesla by confirming the subsidy ends December 31st of this year. Some people were confused. There's a separate purchase tax exemption for NEVs in China right now. That's good for about 10%. That was actually extended to the end of 2023, but the subsidies around 11,000 yuan are going to end at the end of this year. Also, there are definitely multiple reports now of Tesla orders skyrocketing in China, but I think it's too early to really tell. Sticking with China, it looks like the Model S and X Plaid will be unveiled at the China International Import Expo the first week of November. Next up, I want you guys to know that I read all of these analyst notes, but I only really share them if there's something new or interesting. This is basically a four page note from Adam Jonas and Morgan Stanley talking about things from battery day, talking about Tesla's vertical integration, the Inflation Reduction Act, like literally things that we've all been talking about in the Tesla community for months, if not years now. So I didn't find anything new in this and just keep that in mind for all of these going forward. Here we have one of the better pictures of the interior of one of the Cybertruck prototypes, but I just wanna highlight, don't read too much into this because remember, we've seen other prototypes that did have a digital display behind the yoke and sure maybe they remove it for actual production but the point is this should be fairly different than the actual production version and I would say I hope that the production version is also a lot more refined and polished than this but I'm genuinely curious I mean how different do you guys think the interior of the Cybertruck will be compared to this picture Sticking with the Cybertruck, when it comes to aftermarket accessories, I think they're going to be next level. Here's an example of that from Unplugged Performance, some aftermarket wheels for the Cybertruck, designed in part by hypercar designer Sasha Slipinov, who has a pretty great track record. These are already available for pre-sale and the reservation price, $69.42. Next up, Pierre had this tweet talking about this investment opportunity, saying it's unrelated to Tesla, but all of the numbers are of course referring to Tesla. But what I want to highlight is what Gordon Johnson said, yes, because we can actually learn something from going over his points. He said the increase in accounts payable in quarter three was greater than the increase in free cash flow growth, meaning 100% of Q3 cash generated was from not paying suppliers. So is he right? Well, Tesla's accounts payable balance at the end of September, 13,897 million. Going back to the end of quarter two, Tesla's accounts payable balance was 11.2 billion. So if we do the math and subtract that to find out the difference, that's a difference of $2.685 billion. So you would just compare that number to the difference in Tesla's free cash flow from Q3 to Q2. So 3.297 billion minus 621 from quarter two would be a difference of 2.676 billion. Comparing these two numbers, you see that Gordon was actually right. 
Their free cash flow number in quarter three was primarily driven by an increase in accounts payable. But what he's missing is this is actually a feature, not a bug. We talked about Tesla's cash conversion cycle back in this video, so I'll link it below if you missed it, but here's the main takeaway. But the takeaway is that it means vendors or suppliers are financing Tesla's operations. So no extra cash needs to be injected into the business as Tesla scales and grows. Most businesses don't have a negative cash conversion cycle, but some like Amazon and Apple do. A negative cash conversion cycle means inventory is sold and cash is received before you have to pay for it. In other words, a company getting payments from customers before it pays its suppliers. And don't worry, we'll come back to these other two points in the future. Here we have two quick ones that really just solidify the impact that the infrastructure bill and the Inflation Reduction Act are already having in terms of bringing production here to America. This will be a federally funded project and Tritium has begun building some of these chargers in Tennessee and this factory is expected to produce up to 30,000 DC fast chargers per year at peak capacity. We don't have a lot of detail for the rollout timing or specs, but we know Tritium does have a modular and scalable system with 150 kilowatt enabled DC fast chargers. And the second one, one of the largest global auto suppliers, Magna, is going further down the EV path. Magna is expanding a factory in Michigan to build EV specific components that should generate an additional 1500 jobs. Jobs. Magna will be a name to remember in the years to come. They're one of the largest contract manufacturers in the world, so as foreign automakers look to establish United States production to take advantage of the Inflation Reduction Act, Magna's expansion in the United States could play a big role in that. Here we have Porsche looking to make a tri-motor Taycan, yes, to take aim at Tesla's Model S Plaid. They've been going back and forth at the Nürburgring now for some time, and it seems like there's a little bit of a rivalry. So once this tri-motor Taycan comes out, we'll see if Tesla and Elon have an answer or if they need an answer. The Taycan does currently have the Nürburgring production car crown, but there was some controversy because it had a performance kit that was only available in Germany only for one year. So depends on who you ask, but this unspoken rivalry between Porsche and Tesla is awesome for the consumer. Next up, we have Elon quote tweeting SpaceX saying this works on any moving land object. SpaceX said, enjoy high speed, low latency internet while on the move, now accepting orders for the flat high performance Starlink, which provides connectivity while in motion on land. So to date, Starlink has had the standard version with a $599 hardware cost and around $110 per month for the service fee. It was designed for portability and you can set it up as you travel, but it's not designed for permanent installation on a vehicle or in motion usage. The new flat high performance version is a new hardware design built for use in motion. About a month ago, we did see that Starlink Maritime Bundle. It was actually two of these high performance flat dishes for $10,000 total or $5,000 each. This package was designed for ships and yachts. Now this new version is basically the same hardware for RVs and land vehicles and it's also cheaper at $2,500 per dish. The flat high performance version is bigger, about twice as wide as the standard dish, but it does not have to be aimed. It can handle much higher winds, higher temperatures, it can melt more snow off of it more effectively, and it has a much wider view of the sky. The flat high performance model does use more power though with specs of 110 to 150 watts compared to the standard version between 50 and 75 watts. The new hardware is available now with shipping in December but Starlink is also working with a reseller partner Weingard who's big in the RV space. They're offering the flat Starlink system to possibly have them pre-installed on new RVs or to offer professional installation and they should have inventory sooner. So I'll have this link below if you want to check out the new high performance Starlink for use in motion on land. Moving on, just a quick note on the economic front. Tomorrow morning, we'll get two important data points, one for GDP and two for jobless claims. For GDP, the consensus expectation is 2.3% for the annualized rate. For the jobless claims number, the consensus estimate is 223,000. But again, right now, we actually kind of want higher numbers here because that would be a sign that the labor market is loosening, a goal the Fed is trying to accomplish. 
Along similar lines, I have to share this chart from Larry Summers. The title, the consensus has been systematically wrong about inflation coming down. So these red lines have been the consensus forecasts for inflation dating back to March 2021. So they're all coming off the headline CPI numbers. And from that time, all of the consensus forecasts have had these lines basically trending quickly back down to 2 to 3%. What's the trend? Well, with each passing month, the headline CPI numbers have been significantly higher, continually higher than the consensus forecast. So sure, maybe in the future, these forecasts become accurate and we do see inflation come down quickly in 2023. But the point is so far, basically for the better part of the last year, the consensus estimates for inflation coming down quickly have all been wrong and pretty significantly wrong. So to date, inflation has been much higher and much stickier than pretty much everybody thought was going to be the case. So there's at least a chance that that trend continues further into the future than most people think. Shifting gears back to EVs, check this out. So this Instagram page, General Motors Design, as you can see, is an official page. Well, as you can see from this screenshot of that page, they had this post that has since been taken down and for good reason. But at first glance, it's just the upcoming EV Denali in a picture. But then All Car News or somebody else pointed out this, basically showing that this image was a Photoshop of a Rivian R1T. I'm not fully sure what's going on here because the Rivian logo and the perspective is backwards, but in this top image of the Denali EV, if you zoom in, you can literally see the blurring that was done in this image and it wasn't done well. So yeah, if the GM Design Instagram page really is just Photoshopping old pictures of a Rivian R1T, Definitely not a great look. Next up, it's worth noting Elon's new Twitter bio, Chief Twit. <laughs> and this has to be one of the best tweets I've seen in some time. Elon saying, entering Twitter HQ, carrying a sink, saying, let that sink in. 